You did what? I'll be making a decision, all right? Also, any, uh, the traffic rules, any physical or verbal aggression towards an opponent won't be tolerated. There'll be no warning. It's a 15-yard penalty. Second time it happens, you will be excused from this game, okay? Make sure you control that at all times. Also, I have a pet peeve myself, all right? That this is a football field and not a street corner. I want the language conducted as so. Set for action here, UMass will be kicking off to Salve Regina to start it off. And uh, UMass will look down there, and uh, we see number 20, Rig Noel, who's not dressed, Eddie Bochamp, who's not dressed. So uh, that certainly doesn't uh, bode well for the Beacons as well. And it's Kevin McGonagall, the famous hockey coach from UMass, giving us a schedule. And we can't wait to do some ho some hockey action. Now, we'll be doing a lot of that in the upcoming uh, coming months, and we can't wait. Kevin uh, McGonagall does a great job with that UMass Boston Hawk team. We're getting set for action here as UMass getting set to kick off to the Seahawks of Salve Regina, and we're underway. High end over end kick is going to be driven close to the sidelines, but picked up. By the far sidelines, and Salve Regina right off the bat. Starts right back, and they're still on the feet. Salve Regina, we talked about them coming in here. A very good team, and not a bad way to start a game. No, not a bad way at all. Just a uh, man got it about the 10-yard line, right up the left sideline, broke some tackles. They had a, a partial wall set up going up there, but uh, poor kickoff coverage by the Beacons and uh, Salve starts it at midfield in tremendous position. Yeah, that was Sean Schultz who ret returned the kickoff five at 145 out of Middleton, Rhode Island. Now comes the Seahawks. Again, once again, the quarterback is Jeff Wright. DiBiasio is the guy we talked, told you about. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Well, it's given to DiBiasio. DiBiasio, good gain on the first down, almost a 10-yard carry over the right side. Well, Tackling there by Mike McLaughlin. Mike McLaughlin on the tackle. Well, a huge hole, Brian, on the right side of the line. Uh, Salva Regina mostly runs the football. They do it well. Again, as I stated in the opening, uh, they were third in the nation in Division Three last year, and uh, this team knows how to run the football. Yeah, they certainly do. It's some nice holes open up up front there. Tibiasi split now. Swing it to the right side. Nice shift there. That's number 31. That was uh, Luke Arnold, junior 5'9", 170 out of Westland, Rhode Island. First down, Salve Regina Seahawks inside UMass territory. Brian Murphy on the tackle. So they two plays, two runs, one first down. Well, Murphy almost had him for a loss. He slipped that tackle, and then he was brought down by another safety. But uh, again, uh, Murphy had a huge uh, size disadvantage. And uh, if I was Salve Regina, I'd run at those smaller guys all day. This time they have Luke Arnold in the slot left, DiBiase the back directly behind right. In motion now is Dave Boldak. Give it to DiBiase. DiBiase gains five yards over the left side before he's brought down over there making the tackle for UMass. Number 87, Jason McCush. But again, uh, staying on the ground, uh, uh, keeping the, the ball Run and gaining yards. yards. That's what you want from a football team. Well, it's yeah. early yet, but the Beacons are probably going to have to take some gambles on defense. Uh, possibly trying some run blitzes. Uh, they're going to have to do something to stop this Salva Regina potent ground attack. Bull Duck and DiBiasio split behind 
quarterback right. They give it to the second back. That's Bolduck. Breaks the tackle. Still going near a first down. That was number four, Dave Bolduck, a junior, 5'8", 190 out of Pawtucket, Connecticut. And uh, we talked about the, the potent running game of the Seahawks from Salve, Virginia. They're very, so very crisp, uh, Don. They come off that ball. Very, very crisp. Well, Bolduck, nice job. Just straight handoff. Uh, broke a tackle. Bounced it to the outside. Got good yardage. 5'8", uh, five, five, 190 pounds. Out of Pawtucket. First now, and ten Seahawks. Anthony Perry in the slot left. In motion now is Bolduck. DiBiasio right behind, right gives it to DiBiasio. DiBiasio over the left side, gains a couple, and is going to be brought back after a gain of just a few. And they're on the tackle once again, number 87, Jason McCush. Number 52, George Chute on the tackle, alongside with number 72, Larry Pacheco. Well, good job that time by the Beacons, uh, standing their ground uh, in on the tackle, like you said. Uh, I, I believe number 72 also was in there. I don't see his number down here, but uh, Larry Larry Pacheco. There we a go. Gain of uh, three and a half on the play once again. DiBiasio and Bolduck behind now in motion to left is Bolduck. So this time it's going to be inside reverse, and there's some running room there. Nice, nice call that time as they gave it inside on the reverse to number 20. That's uh, uh, Anthony Perry, the senior, uh, 5'10", 200 out of North Alabama, Mass. Another first down for the Seahawks. Well, with the wind that Salva Regina is facing in this first quarter, I doubt you'll see him put it up. I would imagine they'll keep it on the ground 100%. No reason and to. So far, so good. They're just grounding it out, getting four, five, six yards of whack. And uh, now they have Bolduck in the slot right behind. Quarterback right is DiBiasio. First down and 10. In motion now, give it to Perry. Perry tries to cut it up, and nice play over there for UMass Boston, number 70, Adi Bonds. Great play by Adi Bonds. Ball was given to number 11, Mark Dixon, but Adi Bonds made a huge play for the UMass defense as he has for a lot of years over here. Well, we had a flag, Brian. It's going against Salve. Uh, right you are, Adi Bonds. Uh, one of the standouts on the Beacons defensive unit uh, wrapped him up, but it's going for naught as uh, the Seahawks will be penalized. So call a first down and 15. Well, oh, this is what yeah. UMass needs. They need uh, Salve to be a little bit overconfident, uh, shoot themselves in the foot a couple of times. You never know. Once again, quarterback Jeff Wright leads them out. He has Bullduck. Back split now behind him, Bullduck and DiBiasio. Gives it to Nova. Now he rolls out right, has a lot of room, looks in the end zone, and it's going to be complete. Down there making the catch for Salve Regina number two, Jay Brule, a junior, 6'1", 190, out of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, near the goal line. Well, so much for my prediction of keeping it on the ground 100% of the time, I'll tell uh, you. I think they might have done without the penalty. The penalty, you know, put them back a little bit in there. You can see how crisp that offense is, though. Yeah, right. Nice spiral to Brule. Uh, wind seemingly did not affect it, and uh, Seahawks have it first and goal. So it's first down and goal once again. DiBiasio in. Actually, Bulldogs. second. Second down, split behind. Right to give it to DiBiasio. DiBiasio is bowling people over, and he's going to be. Say he's down before he gets to the end zone. Looked like he was in there. Number two, Ryan Murphy on the on the stop, but DiBiasio just showing the strength there. The leg drive. Two on the carry, Mike. Mark yeah, they were close. My mistake. Thought they had it first and goal, but they're, they're darn close now and. It is third down, third and goal. So third down there, looked like they're at about the uh, one and a half, two yard line. Once again, same back, split behind, quarterback right, Bolduck and DiBiasio. The bench cl clapping now on the Seahawks. He's going to sneak it in, and he's going to be in there for a touchdown as the quarterback, Jeff Wright, a junior, 6'2", 190, out of Whitford, Rhode Island, played at North Kingstown, puts the Seahawks up 6-0, so we have 10-37. Uh, Didn't take them long to drive down the field and score. No, not at all. They had great field position. I think they drove it 49 yards. Wright's been going on a quick count all afternoon so far, and he just, uh, on a go, kept it and uh, pounded in the yard and a half or so, and uh, Seahawks looking good right now, Brian. Ryan Sornberger will try the extra point, a 5'11 senior out of Warwick, Rhode Island. Ball spotted down, the kick is up, and the kick is very high, and and no sign. There it is, right to the end. The are upright, so we're just underway here. We have 10.30 left to go, and the teams come up the field. The score, Salve Regina 7, UMass Boston 0, and that, uh, that was kind of ugly if you're a UMass Boston fan. Yeah, 
What can you say? I mean, uh, this Salva Regina team is a good football team. The Beacons are still struggling to find their identity. I mean, they come out there every week. They, they leave their heart on the field. But uh, they're an overmatched team today against yeah. this club. And uh, hopefully they'll put in an effort. I mean, they will put in an effort. Yeah, There's no doubt about that. Yeah, that's something that we, you know, we, we rarely see them call, call it in. They're they're out there and they're they're, only, they're dressing 20 players uh, against a team over there that's dressing close to uh, 50, and uh, it's just it's just uh, it's tough. It's it's tough coming out here with those numbers and playing against such a class organization as Salva Regina. Well, to heighten that, the fact that Eddie Bochamp not in uniform. I mean, he's been uh, really the main man on offense for the Beacons, and uh, his loss will really hurt today. Ryan Murphy and uh, Frank Kempo back down to receive the kick from Sonnenberger. Takes a bounce and picked up, but now we're gonna be fell on by number 15, Mike McLaughlin. So UMass has the ball. First and 10, where they'll start out at about the, uh, looks like they're at about the 32 yard line, 33 yard line. So they'll start out there and quarterbacking now will be Mike Rich. Uh, quite a Stanley quarterback Eddie Bochamp is out, as is uh, Rig Noel, so it's going to come be in the hands of Mike Rich here. Well, if you noticed, uh, Sorenberger absolutely kept that ball low, which was the right thing to do, and uh, it came spinning at McLaughlin, and he did the correct thing, fell on it, and uh, Beacons have the ball. Pretty good field position. The motion now is uh, Mike Bisciani gives it to second back Campo, and Campo's nothing doing there as he's just stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and UMass is going to have to get uh, Frank Campo on the carry. Th he's not going to be able to just run into that line straight ahead, uh, Don. It's just this line is just too good for the Salve Regina, so they're going to have to come up with some some sort of wrinkles here. Yeah, Salve defensively, uh, one of the. Uh, top-ranked team sixth in total defense last year. Uh, opponents averaging only 10 points a game against the Seahawks. Motion now is Bisciani again, backs in the eye. Deep back is Campo. Give it to the second back, that's, for, I'm sorry, that's Campo. Campo's the second deep back in the eye that time, and just nothing there. It's just Salve Regina team is just off that ball in a flash. Well, super play that time by number five, uh, number five defensive end Ross Ruggiero, 6'3", 220 out of Walpole. He submarined the blocker, and that just threw the, threw the whole timing off the play, and uh, Beacon's in a hole here, third and long. We were told coming in, to keep our eye on Ruggiero. He's the real deal, and so far he's on, shown to be just that. List and Campo the backs straight back looking downfield Bisciani it's going to be very long covered over there by number three uh, Ron Contreras and three and out for UMass and that's certainly not what you want to do against a team like uh, Salve Regina. No you uh, would like to hold on to the ball for a while uh, Rich uh, threw a nice ball but uh, he got up in that wind and yeah. it just sailed. And, yeah this uh, wind is really ferocious over here. I don't think I've ever seen a defensive end with the number five Brian. No, but he's, he's a good one. Jay Brule back now to receive the kick from Campo. Nice snap, good rush. And he gets high, kick gets in that wind and, and just sails. Brule is gonna take it at his 21 yard line. Gets, oh, nice block there, Brule. Oh, gonna go, they're gonna call a clip. I don't know about that. Brule down the sideline, has, a, has an alley. This one's gonna come back no matter what happens, but there's gonna be a, I'm not sure about uh, about the clip. They look like a good block to me. Yeah, absolutely. I. I I mean, I hate to sound like I'm uh, taking the side of the enemy here, but that was a great block, number 13, for uh, Salva Regina. Uh, I mean, yeah, he ben just Jarvis, yeah. he, he got him he got him clean, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and uh, the referee looked right at him, threw the flag, and said, "Hey, this is coming back. Good break for the Beacons, but uh, a lucky break, I gotta say." Yeah, we'll t we'll certainly take it, but uh, it looked like a, a good block from from where we're sitting. But nonetheless, the, th the flag was thrown, and uh, we've seen a lot of that lately. There's a play the other day at second base, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Illegal block. I don't know about that, but uh, you can use all the help you can get when you play in a team like this, so they'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. The there, there was a penalty, block Is that, that wiped out, uh, what, about a 40, 40, 50 yard return? So, see, a second penalty for the Seahawks. Uh, that's the good news. Bad news is they're up 7 to nothing. So it's first and 10 at the 15 yard line. Seahawks lead 7-0 early here. 8.49 left in the first period. As quarterback Jeff Wright comes in now. Once again, he has TV Yasso and, uh, and Dave Bolduck, his main backs behind him, will be split behind him. In the sl slot right now is uh, Jay Brule. TV now the only back behind 
Quarterback right in motion now. You give it to uh, number number 20. That's uh, Anthony Perry. Perry has some some good yardage as he cut it up over the left side. And uh, they, uh, show, they show a lot of different looks at you, Don. Yeah, play started out going left, and he made a nice cutback after he had gotten three or four yards and was able to pick up another six or seven. And uh, we have a beacon down on the field, and that's one of the last things we can use right now. Looks like it might be, well, I can't really see a number, Brian. How about you? Looks like Ryan Murphy from here. No, uh, no, Murphy's up. He's in. Okay. Uh, right. He's standing. That's, that's who I thought yeah. it was, but no, he's standing. He's okay. Number no, 12. Number 12, not number two. Number 12, R.B. Spears is going to get up and be held off. Looks like it was just wind. Yeah, first and ten. He's grabbing uh, his neck. Maybe a stinger, maybe wind, but uh, good to see that he can walk off under his own power. First down and ten. Perry picked up uh, 12 yards in that carry, so. First down and 10 for Salve Regina. Once again, DiBiase directly behind quarterback Jeff Wright. In motion now is Perry. Give it fake. Give it to DiBiase over the middle. DiBiase gains uh, four or five on the play before he's brought down in there, making the play for UMass Boston. Number 17, Jim Wilcox. Uh, George Seek got a hand on him as he made it through the line. He almost had him wrapped up, but uh, the running back was. Able to shake that off and get another yard or two, but uh, number 55 for UMass, Seek, made the initial contact. Okay, right leads him out once again. He has DiBiaso directly behind him. He has Perry in the slot right, now in motion. His two gives it back to Jay Brule. A nice gain once again. Another first down for Sabre June. They keep moving those sticks and they keep running these, these backs in and out. Tackle, Ryan Murphy. Yeah. Murphy on the tackle. The ball was actually carried by Luke Arnold. They have a number of good backs in there. Don, they keep bringing them, bringing them in and bringing them out. And, uh, they're, uh, they, and they all just keep moving those stakes. Yeah, they follow their blocks. Arnold started to the outside, made the cutback, found the first down marker, and uh, Seahawks on the move again. First and 10 once again at the 40 in motion. They give it to DiBiaso. DiBiaso 45. DiBiaso 50 and into UMass territory. Tackled in there once again by Ryan Murphy. Uh, this is a guy we talked about coming in. Mark DiBiaso, senior 58190 out of North Attleboro, Mass. Has another, has a second down and one. Well, we, we've said it a zillion times before on these telecasts. The good running backs keep the legs moving. And on contact, DiBiasio just kept those legs churning. He's up close to a first down. Looks like they're about a yard shy. And uh, nice situation here for uh, Salva Regina. Yeah, it certainly is. Luke Arnold in the slot left. The back split now behind right. Straight drop back. Heads it downfield, and it's going to be complete. Beautiful pass and catch by Ron Casper. Casper got behind Ryan Murphy, and everything's clicking here for the South Bay Regina Seahawks. Yeah, number 21. Casper. Casper, nice play. Uh, had to turn around, get the ball uh, into the wind. A, yeah, a beautifully exactly. thrown ball by Wright. That's the point, John. That was into the wind. And, uh, you know, hey, you had it second in about a yard. Nice down to work with. Uh, they figure if they don't get it on that, hey, they can ground it out in two downs and get it. But uh, I think Beacon's uh, really not looking for that play that no, time. I think so. Once again, DiBiase behind. The slot right is Anthony Perry. In motion now, Perry. They give it to uh, Perry. Look up here down the left side. It just continues to thunder right down there. And I uh, just, I just love all the different looks they give it. They give it to, they give it to DiBiase. They give it to Arnold. They give it to Perry. And and uh, just all quality backs. And UMass just can't figure this out. Yeah, Jeff Wright right now. Uh, a lot of credit has to be given to him. Good ball handling. Uh, nice fakes. Uh, very smooth on the handoffs. Uh, everything clicking right now for Salve. Uh, Beacons need a turnover. First down and first down and goal now. Once again, DiBiase, the sole back behind right. First and goal. The motion bulldog rolls right, has some room. Looking in the end zone, throws and it's incomplete. That time, right went into the end zone and they threw it incomplete. So it'll be second down and goal for South Bay Regina. Jeez, I think Wright should have put his helmet down and uh, carried that. Looked like he could have made it to that right cone uh, on the right side of your television screen. There is he had some green in front of him. Adi uh, Bonds comes back in for UMass. Yeah, actually, one of the few times Beacons had that play defensed yeah. very well. 6.05 left in the first quarter. 7-0 the score in case you just tuned in. Salve Regina Seahawks with the ball. Second down and goal. Once again, quarterback Jeff Wright leads him out. He has DiBiase and Bulldogs split, split down behind him. 
Second and goal from about the seven, eight yard line. Motion now is on. He gives it to DiBiase. DiBiase spins and is brought down after a gain of four or five. Yeah, he's close. Looks like he's down about the two. Adi Bonds once again That's on the tackle. Made, uh, number 70, Adi Bonds. So third down and goal at about the two, two and a half yard line. Well, you can't say enough about Artie Barnes, Brian. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, he's receiving some double team action from these teams coming in here uh, week in and week out, and the man continues to make plays. Yeah, we call his name an awful lot, but there's a reason for that because he's in an awful lot of plays. And now once again, right leads him out. DiBiase, the back, directly behind him. The slot right now is, is Perry. Gives DiBiase in, he's close and he's gonna be in for a touchdown. Mark DiBiase gets Salve Regina on top, 13 nothing, and uh, it's been all Salve Regina. UMass has only had the ball for three downs here. You, uh, Salve Regina has come out and really controlled this game from, from start to the point we're at now with 5.19 left to go. They lead 13 nothing, and now trying for the extra point is Ryan Sonberger. Uh, we said at the beginning, uh, this would be a uh, great Bill Parcells team uh, uh, a team that's able to run the ball, and they run it, and they run it with authority. No good. Sornberg is going to run it right. Now looking in the end zone, being chased, and throws it up, and it's going to be intercepted. That's a live ball. Back for UMass, number 42, uh, Nakia Kaiser, and he's going to be brought down. That was a live ball, and Kaiser brought it back, and the point after is no good. So the teams come out filled with the score. Salve Regina, 13, UMass Boston, 0, and it's uh, it certainly is going to be a long day if uh, UMass can't move the ball in offense, son. Well, Ryan Sorenberg, the uh, ECAC first-team all-star place kicker for the Seahawks, uh, he did the right thing. He picked it up. He tried to make a play, but uh, he's an uh, all-conference kicker, uh, not thrower. He kind of threw it up for grabs, did the best he could in a bad situation, and uh, Kaiser was there, made a nice return. Uh, a little bit of good news for the, for the Beacons. Uh, they don't give up the point, and 13-0 uh, Seahawks, but... Uh, Really an uphill battle here the rest of this afternoon for the uh, Beacons, Brian. He certainly threw the ball better than Gary Permian, though. <laughs> I remember that. I'm, <laughs> I'm dating myself there. That was one of the that was one of the worst passes I think I've ever seen in my life. If you can call that a pass, I'm not sure. <laughs> it certainly sticks in my mind, though. Well, listen, that guy was about uh, 5'5", 150 yeah. pounds soaking wet, so he just wanted to get rid of that thing. He didn't want to get killed. I wouldn't have even touched it if I was in. <laughs> Sorenberg now will be kicking off again into the very, very stiff wind. And he gets it high into that wind. It just hangs up there. And uh, Ryan Murphy's going to play it. Murphy goes down on his own volition as a... Uh, Ryan Murphy on the catch and return. That'll be first down, Beacon. That was a really tough play for Murphy, Brian, because as you, as you said, yeah. when he kicked it initially, it looked, hey, you know, he got into it, but the ball hit about the 30-yard line, and then it started drifting back. Murphy had to come up and, uh, and field it before it hit the ground, because if that thing hits <laughs> the ground, uh, there's going to be all kinds of confusion. Yeah, that really hung up there for a long time, and, and, uh, and the Seahawks are right down the throat once again now. Beacons come out, the up back in the eye is Dave List, the deep back is Frank Campo. Quarterback is Rich, drops straight back, gives to Campo. Campo's just nailed in there, number 17, Matt Ormer, then on the play. Yeah, that, that's not gonna get it done here. Uh, they have a tremendous wind at their back. Uh, obviously, they would like it. to establish a ground game, but right now, while they have this wind, uh, and they're down 13 nothing. I mean, what the heck? What do they have to lose? I guess is my point. Yeah, you ain't kidding. At this point, I mean, there's just nothing there on the ground. I mean, this is this is a solid defensive unit. I see uh, RB Spears right down in front of us getting uh, fitted with a. Uh, oh, that's a different kind of thing, huh? Like a neck, uh, shoulder. Uh, Pitch yeah. drops straight back, throws to Murphy, incomplete. Murphy double team there and threw it in between. That's incomplete by number 11, Mike Receiver, Murray. so third down. Two, Ryan Murphy. Third down and, and 12, and the Beacons have, uh, have had five plays and uh, have no luck on, on any of the five. No, well, at least they threw the ball that time. I mean, I'll give them credit for that. Uh, getting back to number 12, R.B. Spears, uh, he left the field. Look, I, it must have been a stinger because they fitted him with a, looks like a special neck collar type pad thing. Once again, Rich leads him out. Up back is Listy, back is Campo in the eye. Motion now, Bisciani. Third down is going to quarterback sneak it. Wow. 
Sabe Regina right there on the play. Up the middle, number 11, Mike Rick. Once again, number That's 17, right Matt down. Ormond in on the play, and uh, this is just a mismatch. Well, that was a concession there on third down, Brian. I mean, it was third and 12, and you run a quarterback sneak. I figure uh, his figuring being, well, hey, we got the win, let's punt, and uh, at least we'll have the wind at our back for the punt. Campbell will do the punting. Nice snap, good rush. Uh, just got it off. It was going to be aided by the window, and it jumps over. Now Casper, Casper loses it. He chased and makes a nice move. Casper still on his feet. Ryan Murphy there makes another nice move. Casper now has some room down the left sidelines. Ron Casper, good blocking. Nice wall being formed over there, trying to catch him. Bessiani, and he knocks him out of bounds. But a, a beautiful run by Ron Casper. They had him hemmed in every which way but lose, but he manages to, to spring for a, a huge run. Jose Cabrera had a hand on him at about the five-yard line. And uh, he just spun away. A couple of beacons missed him. Murphy had a shot at him. He got blocked. Uh, then all the crackback blocks started, and he had a wall up the left side. And uh, Salva Regina, once again, out near midfield, uh, a short field to go. And uh, it could be uh, 19 pretty quick. Yeah, well, it, it just, it's been all Salva Regina. You mess with that. Uh, Three and out, three and out, and Sabre Virginia, every time they get, they continue to drive right down the field. Once again, DiBiase, the back now behind quarterback uh, Jeff Wright. In motion now, this is Luke Arnold. Arnold to the 50. Arnold 45. Arnold 40, still on his feet. Arnold down the sidelines is going to be knocked out of bounds finally by Nikia Kaiser, but not before he has a, another first down and a big run by number 31, Luke Arnold. A oh, beautiful block by Anthony Perry a 5'10", 200-pound senior uh, running back out of North Attleboro. He w enabled the lane there as he took Murphy out along the sideline, and uh, that just sprung the running back, and a beautiful play, well-conceived, nice execution. Seahawks on the move again. First and 10, the ball about the 26-yard line, looks like, as, uh, as they all can do it. Arnold, Bulldog, uh, certainly the B DC, uh, DiBiaso. Now they have uh, trips right, and in, in, in just coming in the game is Jesse Pimentel. DiBiase, the back behind. Now in motion is Arnold. They give it to Perry. Perry tries to cut it outside, and it's gonna be brought down nicely by number 59. That was uh, Derek Bowers. Yeah, Bowers, nice job. Little misdirection in the backfield, but Bowers, uh, whether he was fooled or not, he got him in the backfield there, tripped him up, and uh, I think that's one of the first plays uh, for negative yardage against the Seahawks this afternoon. So second and call it uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, 11 actually. Second down 11 now looking for a, for a play from the sidelines. We have uh, just under three now, 258 and counting. 13 nothing the score in case you just joined us. Now on the slot right they have Perry. Slot left is Arnold, directly behind quarterback. Right is DiBiase, now in motion. This period given to DiBiase. DiBiase is nailed as he gets over the left side. Another nice hit in there by number 57. That's uh, Mike McGill. On the tackle, number 57, Mike McGill. Yeah, McGill shucked off his blocker and uh, had a good shot at DiBiase and uh, nice, nice tackle. Hit him square, brought him down, and uh, first third and long of the afternoon for the Seahawks. Uh, kind of a strange position for them to be in. Yeah, it's almost like punting. I don't know what that is. Right leads him out once again. DiBiaso, the back behind him. Motion now is Perry. Splits, split out to Perry. Perry has, oh, what blocking down the right side. And he's going to be in for a touchdown. That's Luke Arnold. As uh, they just cleared out people. It's just a, a great blocking scheme. And they were just knocking people down there and, and just running over them as uh, Arnold gets in the right side of the end zone. Uh, just another another great conceit play. And uh, this team is certainly for real. Yeah, Arnold followed his block, put on a burst of speed, got to the outside, and he was gone. Beacons uh, really didn't lay a hand on him. They'll try for the point again this time. Uh, we'll see if we have any misadventure. <laughs> Ryan Sonberg, sir, kick is up and wow, he gets him really high, doesn't he? The ball just continues, gets in that wind, but it's good. So uh, teams come up field once again, and uh, this is this is uh, this is what we had had hoped wouldn't happen, but uh, so far it's happened. As as the uh, the Seahawks come in here with a with a great team, great offensive unit, have just just driven UMass back on the heels and. 20-0, uh, still in the first first quarter. Well, he, on the bright side, you'll probably be able to get some work for people that you might not get in. Unfortunately for the Beacons, I would say probably pretty much everybody plays anyway because uh, they're so short of, uh, of players. Uh, I would hope that uh, at halftime, uh, 
Coach Vasalve would call off the dogs. Yeah, I'm sure he uh, would. Tim Cohen, uh, I would hope. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, this is just a total mismatch. Uh, you know, my heart goes out to the Beacons, but right now, the better team is winning. You, you want to you know, keep your first team in there for at least a half, get them some playing time, and you know, maybe in the second half we'll see. But the second team come in, but by then this is going to be astronomical as Stormberg will now kick off once again. And Beacons have had the ball twice, three and out, three and out both times. Ball hangs up there once again. That one, no one knows where it is, and the ball is finally covered by number 87, Jason McCush. But uh, people are running away from the ball. The ball uh, flag thrown late. Uh, Mike McLaughlin was actually running the wrong way. Well, th this wind is uh, developing an, I an interest interesting situation. Uh, I'm sure Salve isn't isn't thinking onside kick with these kickoffs, but what's happening is the ball is going 20 or 30 yards, and uh, you, like you said before, he's getting good height on him, yeah. and it's pushing it back, and the Beacons players yeah, really aren't sure you know, <laughs> how to go about First getting the ball. And that time, uh, luckily for the Beacons, the ball went out of bounds, uh, as there was a scramble uh, before they got it, but good Field possession, once again, uh, if anything, the wind has caused the Beacons to have decent field position. And you could kick the ball to one side of the field and drive the window drive to the other side, and that time the wind just took it out of, out of bounds. They're faking the blitz now. Rogerio over there, he's, a, he's tough on that defensive end. Long count, drops straight back, gives it to Campo. Campo, nothing doing there. First man. Number 39, Frank Campo on the carry. Oh, they're in on the stop is uh, number eight, Mac, Mac Romano. Beacons try to draw play, but uh, you really need to establish something uh, in order for a draw play or a screen play to work, and uh, they haven't really established anything yet. Uh, they're, they're losing yardage on straight dive plays, which at least should get you back to the line of scrimmage, you know? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the pursuit in, uh, uh, by South Virginia has just been unbelievable. Once again, list the up back, can't blow the deep back. Give it to the first back, that's List, and he's gonna gain a couple yards over the right side, but certainly not nearly first down. Well, give give Salve credit, Brian. Uh, you, you'd think a team of this stature might come in here and uh, be a little bit flat, saying, okay, you know, this is an easy victory for us, but I'll tell you, right now on that field, they are all business. They really are, that's right. This, they're so crisp, I mean, offense and defense. The defense just had the pursuit. I mean, they they, uh, they get penetration. They, they just do everything right, as we're now under a minute. And third down and, and 10 once again. And this has been the situation all day long for the Beacons. Mike Rich, the quarterback, they fake the blitz. Rich looking back to pass, throws over the middle and very, very far overthrown to Mike, Mike uh, Vesante. And once again, it's a punting situation. Uh, once again, double coverage by uh, the Seahawks. Uh, Ron Contreras and Greg LaFontaine over there in Vesante. And uh, I mean, the play was right. You know, you should be throwing the ball here, but uh, the Seahawks seem to have uh, two or three guys to uh, every beacon one so far in anything they try to do. Campbell back once again is third.